Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and this lesson is going to be on compound unit conversions. Now, the first question you might be asking yourself is, what is a compound unit? Well, compound units are those composed of more than one unit. So instead of just liters, seconds, miles, pounds, it's multiple units. So for example, miles per hour is a compound unit because it has two different units in it. Grams per milliliter is another compound unit, which you probably know is often used in things like density. And another one, often used in physics, is kilogram meter per second squared, which in physics we call the Newton that has a unit. Well, the way you convert them is just the same way as any other unit conversion using the standard unit analysis method. But, but now, for example, if we were doing miles per hour, we'd have to do two different unit conversions. Have to convert miles into whatever it's asking and hours into whatever it's asking. So, so, uh, so I think the best way to explain this is just with a few examples. So let's look at this first one. It says a motorcycle was traveling at 85 kilometers per hour and it wants to know what is that same speed but in meters per second. Okay, so let's work this out. So we've got 85 kilometers per hour. So I will write that as 85 kilometers over an hour. And I'm trying to get that down here into meters per second. So it works the same way as any other conversion. So kilometers has to go to meters and hours has to go to seconds. So whatever is on top has to go to whatever is on top. Whatever is on bottom has to go to whatever is on bottom. So we need to get from kilometers to meters. Okay, so how do we convert kilometers and meters? Well, as you might recall from our lesson on metric prefixes in the metric system, kilo means 10 to the third. So a kilometer is 10 to the third meter. Well, we want kilometers to cancel out. So since it's on top here, the half of the conversion that has kilometers has to go on the bottom, which means the other half would have to go on the top. Okay, so I do that, kilometers cancels, and now I'm left with meters. So here's meters here, here's meters here. Good, so I'm already halfway there. But now I still have to convert hours into seconds. Okay, well I need a conversion that gets me from hours to seconds. Now you may not know one that goes directly, but you probably know one hour equals 60 minutes. Okay, well, now remember, any conversion factor can always be written um, as a ratio two different ways. So I could write one hour per 60 minutes or I could write 60 minutes per one hour. Well in our case here, how do I need it? Well, I've got hours on the bottom. So for hours to cancel, it's got to be on the top here. So the one hour has to go on top and the 60 minutes would have to go on the bottom. So now hours cancels. Well now I'm in minutes, but I want to go from minutes to seconds. Okay, well I know that one minute equals 60 seconds. Okay, well again, I want to get rid of minutes and leave myself with seconds. So, which one has to go on top, minutes or seconds? Okay, minutes has to cancel and it's on the bottom here, so it has to go on the top in the next conversion. One minute per 60 seconds. So I cancel out minutes and now I'm left with seconds, which is what I want. So I punch that in my calculator and I get 23.611 repeating. Okay, so that's the answer. But of course, the next step and the last step we always got to do is check our significant figures. So 85, well that only has two significant figures. How about this conversion? 10 to the third meters to one kilometer. Well, remember, this is a metric to metric conversion. So this is considered to be exact. It's been defined that way. So it wasn't a measurement, so it doesn't have significant digits. How about one hour to 60 minutes? Well, again, one hour to 60 minutes has also been defined. So that's exact. One minute into 60 seconds. Again, that's also been defined. So that's exact. So the only one that really has significant digits was the first one. So two, so the answer has to have two significant digits. So the six tells me to round up, so I would round that off to 24 meters per second. Okay, let's try one more. 
This one says, bromine has a density of 3.12 grams per milliliter. What is this density in pounds per gallon? Okay, so let's write down what I know. 3.12 grams per milliliter. So literally over a milliliter. And I'm trying to get to pounds per gallon. So I'll just put it way down here because I'm not sure how much space I'll need. Pounds per gallon. Okay, well again, I have to turn... Whatever's on top, grams, into whatever I want that's on top, pounds. I have to turn milliliters on bottom into gallons on bottom. Okay, so let's see. So now the order doesn't matter. I could do the grams and convert it first, or I could convert the milliliters first. It really won't matter mathematically. So I tell you what, just to prove it, I'll do the bottom one first this time. So milliliters needs to go to gallons. Okay, so I need a conversion factor it has milliliters in it. I'm trying to get to gallons. Well, what do I know? Well, I know one gallon is 3.785 liters. Okay, so that gets me a little closer. But I don't need liters. I need milliliters. But I do know how to get from milliliters to liters. Okay, so what does milli mean? Well, again, milli, the prefix, means 10 to the negative third. So a milliliter is 10 to the negative third liters. Okay, so I got milliliters on the bottom. So for it to cancel, milliliters has to go on the top. So one milliliter on the top, 10 to the negative third liters on the bottom. Okay, now I'm in liters, and I'm trying to get to gallons. So I have this conversion factor right here that was given. So I want to cancel liters. So, so where does the liters have to go? 3.785 liters. Does that go on top or bottom? Well, for it to cancel out, since it's on the bottom here, it has to go on the top here. So 3.785 liters over one gallon. Liters cancels, and I'm left with gallons. Okay, so we're halfway there. We got gallons. Now I got to do grams into pounds. Okay, well, it gives me a conversion factor that says one pound is 454 grams. Okay, now grams are on top, so in order for grams to cancel, the gram part of the conversion has to go on the bottom. 454 grams on bottom, which means one pound goes on top. So now grams cancels, and look, I got pounds. Okay, so there I am. I'm in pounds per gallon. So now I just have to go through and perform the operations on my calculator. So remember, anything on top you multiply by, anything on the bottom of a conversion is divided by. So this would be 3.12 divided by 10 to the negative third times 3.785 divided by 454. So I went ahead and did that on my calculator and I got 26.01145 pounds per gallon. Okay, well, let, well let's check out our, our significant figures. Well, 3.12, that's three significant figures. How about 10 to the negative third milliliters? Well, milliliter to liter, that is metric to metric, so that is exact. How about 3.785 liters in a gallon? Is that exact? Well, gallons are English system, liters are metric system. So we learned metric to English are never exact. So this actually was measured. Somebody had to measure the amount of liters in a gallon. So that would be four significant figures. How about a pound is 454 grams? Well again, pounds are English, grams are metric, so somebody had to measure this, so that would be three significant figures. Okay, so we've got three significant figures, exact, four significant figures, three significant figures, so our answer is always limited to the fewest, which would be three. So our answer can only have three significant figures. So we'd round that off and we'd get 26.0 pounds per gallon. Well, there you go. Hope you learned something in that lesson. Um, for many more practice problems, be sure and come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com. And we will catch you next time. Thank you.